Member White Alice? Here. Knudsen? Here. Mullen? Here. Stringer? Here. Stahl? Here. Additions or deletions from the agenda? No additions or deletions from staff. Public forum? <laughs> Nobody's, Nobody's here? here. Nope. <laughs> Uh, presentation introduction of new members so I'll, I'll do this introduction um we made this a presentation item because there's no action to be taken um but we did have some vacancies on the board of adjustment and the board of trustees held um an interview process to interview potential candidates um and those candidates have since been appointed um, Megan Mullen has actually um, been appointed to the board um, for a number of months, but we haven't had a meeting. So this is our first meeting. Welcome, Megan, and thank you. Um, and then most recently, uh, Sherman Stringer uh, was appointed to the Board of Adjustments. So welcome, Sherman. Thank you for being here. Um, the, the other change I'll announce, and, and the alternates are not here, but Stephen Carmen did hold a regular full seat on the Board of Adjustments, and he was recently appointed to the Planning Commission um, and so was then appointed as an alternate on the Board of Adjustments. So if, if one of the regular members isn't able to vote or isn't able to attend, we have two alternate positions and there, there's a first alternate and a second alternate in that order. And depending on the need, one of them would step up or both of them could step up to make sure that we have five uh, voting members on items. So those were the, the real quick announcements. Um, and I think it might be helpful too, um, since Megan and Sherman are New, do you want to give just a couple minutes on your background and your interests and welcome to the Board of Adjustment. I didn't give you any heads up that I'd ask you to speak, so my apologies. And you got to use the mic. Oh, yeah, thanks. We, we, do, we do have to use the microphones for recording purposes and for anyone that is watching online for them to be able to hear us. It also helps when we have a full room and it does happen. I don't say. <laughs> So my name is Sherman Stringer. Um, I've lived in Wellington now for just over a year, but I've, I work for Hartford Homes and I built Harvest Village. So I've been in Wellington essentially for the last seven and a half years uh, working with Cody and working with Patty. Uh, so I got very familiar with the community and really kind of fell in love with it. And that's why I decided to buy a house here and uh, make my home here. Um, I enjoy typical Colorado type activities. Uh, if it's outdoors, I'm happy. So uh, that's essentially me and my background. I am currently the area construction manager for Hartford Homes. So I oversee all of our field construction managers or superintendents, whatever you would like to call them. And I've been with them for eight and a half years. Thanks, Sherman. Thank you. I'm Megan Mullen, and um, I've lived in Wellington most of my life. I went to Istone, Wellington Junior High School, and then Poudre High School. Um, I live here now to raise my family and be near our, our family, which is, like, great. And we were really happy to come back to Wellington to live. Um, I have my master's in architecture and always planned to get involved. Um, this was a really good time since my youngest is going to be going to kindergarten um, this year. And it just seems like the growth is getting exponential and that I'd really like to add my knowledge and expertise to um, the town's planning and review boards. Um, my undergrad is in environmental science, so I'm really passionate about sustainability and thinking um, about construction and architecture um, and community growth um, on all levels. And I think one thing that I'm um, really well suited to this board for is I've navigated variances and um, adjustments from the architecture side for many years in really local and national municipalities. And I have a pretty good handle on um, how other communities function and 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 use the code. I've had to use the code to try to defend asking for them 
And I think that that is um, really vital when you're reviewing something to kind of also be able to put yourself in the person's shoes who's asking for the variance. So I'm really excited to be here. Thanks, Megan. Um, that's all we really had planned for the uh, introductions. Um, we, I, I was, I, I had that thought and I think that would be a, a very fine thing to do. I'm going to go first. Okay. Get over. I'm Kathy White Dallas. I work for my husband, who's a large animal vet. We go out in our truck so we don't have a clinic or anything. And I have two kids and four grandkids. And we moved here 10 years ago because Fort Collins just got way too weird. And we um, have been on the parks board. I think that's, I really don't remember how I ended up on the board of adjustments, but something. And so, <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a great place to live. It really is, I'm glad to be here. I've lived in Larimer County since the late seventies. That's it. Uh, Wyatt Knudsen, uh, let's see, I've been here for 20, uh, well, in Wellington for 21 years, 22 years almost, and then Colorado for 27. Um, engineer by trade, um, worked for CTL Thompson, served on the Wellington um, town board for six years. And then once I got off of that, I still wanted to be somewhat involved in the community. This seemed like a pretty low key, um, good area to use kind of my expertise and knowledge of town functions and how things work and codes and everything associated with that. So it seemed to be a good fit and it meets quite frequently. So it's easy to get to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Eric Stahl and I've been in Wellington since 2016. Um, I do accounts payable by trade. Um, I've been in Colorado for 20 years now, originally from South Dakota, and that's about it. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> You're Cody Burns. I was going to say, I, I, I'll, say, I'll say my alma mater. No, um, uh, I'm Cody Bird. I'm the town's planning director. I've been working with the town for almost six years, um, so it's been a pleasure to to be here. Um, we Our department represents uh, planning, zoning, building, and code enforcement, and we are the liaison to the town board, the planning commission, and the board of adjustments. Um, so there's a lot of things happening in Wellington, a lot of really good things happening. So it's exciting to be a part of this community. Um, and if anyone has any questions at any time, feel free to reach out. Someone in our department can probably help you. And if not, we know how to, who to point you to for those questions. So happy to be here. Patty? Um, Patty Lundy, planning analyst. I've worked for the town for 16 years. Um, started as AP clerk, <laughs> um, and I've lived in Wellington since 1999, grew up over in Alt, but was born in Wisconsin. Thanks, Thanks Patty. Consideration of minutes for the meeting of October 27th. And just for before you dive into this, um, since we've got a couple of new members, um, Generally speaking, abstentions are not particularly useful from a voting standpoint. You are full members. You have the ability to vote on minutes, but we also understand that you weren't at the last meeting. So um, we do need to have three votes for approval of the minutes um, and you are full voting members. So I'm just throwing that out there um, in case there's uh, any kind of questions. Is it fine if I attended it as a... Yes. I attended the whole thing. Yes, okay. it is. I have one because I understand this kind of caused a problem at one of the board of trustees meeting um Eric is down here as the chairman and all along he's been acting or vice or something so you might just want to change it yeah that's it <laughs> Th thanks for that Kathy I think and that's I agree with that from a staff standpoint I think that is more accurate um Eric had stepped up to as the vice chair had served as the chair in the chair's absence, the chair had had uh, previously resigned to take a seat on another board or commission. So, so there's, there's a place on the last page and then where it says roll call. Okay, just so two spots. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't see many. Yeah, because the rest of the time, Judge, everybody just called member something, or just their last name. Okay. Uh, thank you. We will uh, make that that change or those changes. Any other additions or corrections to the minutes? Okay. I make motion to accept the minutes of last time. Yep. With, with, with the noted with changes. With my recommendation. Perfect. From October 21st, 2022. Second. Roll call. Member White Alice? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Mullen? Yes. Stringer? Yes. Stahl? Yes. New business, election of officers. I'll introduce it real quick. Uh, it's a really short staff report. I'm sure it made sense. Um, but we, we do the election of officers uh, annually. The term is for one year. Um, you'll elect a chairperson and a vice chairperson. Uh, the chairperson presides over the meetings. The vice chair serves in the chair's absence. And those are the only two positions that you have to elect. You do have a secretary, but that's performed by your town staff for recording the minutes, preparing the minutes, preparing the agendas. And we sign off once the once the board um, approves minutes, we sign them off as, as official. We attest the approval. So um, to elect or elections for officers, I'd recommend doing first the chair, then the vice chair. Um, you need to uh, make a nomination and the nomination has to accept the nomination. Once there are no more nominations, then we'll vote um, on each of those positions. Pretty straightforward. Any questions on procedure? No. All right, very good. I'd like to nominate Wyatt Newton for chairman. Second. If he accepts. <laughs> you don't want it anymore. You're better at this than I am. <laughs> yeah. Like any other nominations? Any other nominations? Okay. Would you like to we'll vote on on the uh, election for chairperson? Hold call. Member White Alice? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Mullen? Yes. Stringer? Yes. Stahl? Yes. You're in charge now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The technically the the next. rules state the next meeting, um, and so yeah, I think you still have the floor, um, and I'm I'm happy to help if you need any any guidance. But I think you've got it in control. <laughs> He's just better at it. <laughs> he had way more experience. Vice chair, any nominations? Do you want to be vice chair? I'd be fine with vice chair. Yeah. I'll nominate vice chair. I'll second. I'll accept. Any other nominations? You want to go first? No. <laughs> <laughs> Roll. Member White House? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Mullen? Yes. Stringer? Yes. Stahl? Yes. We can't. Those were the hardest items. That was quick. Yeah, yeah those were the hard ones. Um, and so uh, when you come to the next meeting, um, uh, Mr. Knudsen will be chair and Mr. Stahl will be vice chair. And we'll probably do something like switch those two name tags for your seats so that the chair's in the middle. Works for me. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Um, and that was all the action item. The The last thing that we put on the agenda was a, just another a presentation or a presentation discussion. Um, since we have a couple of new members and because this board doesn't meet real frequently, what we wanted to do was uh, go over some uh, meeting procedure, basics, uh, voting, um, parliamentary procedures. And we've put together a, a, the start of a, a binder. It doesn't have a lot in it, but we wanted to put a little bit of information and some resources for you to have on hand. This will be your binder as a Board of Adjustments member um, as we come up with new materials or, or supplemental materials. We'll put them in those binders for you. Um, you can hang on to them, take them home with you. If we have new material, we'll just provide you copies to, to insert there. Um, we did invite um, our town attorney, Dan Sapienza, um, to attend tonight's meeting to help with, with some of the, the legal matters regarding the Board of Adjustments and its roles. 
unfortunately he's had a, a, a death in the family and he's attending to that currently. So um, we may invite him back at a future meeting um, to go over that. Um, in, in Dan's absence, the procedures don't change a whole lot. Sometimes it's nice to hear it from the attorney, but I'm very well versed in those procedures as well. So um, I'll give you the uh, planning version crash course on those. And then if you have questions, I can answer them. Um, and if we have follow-ups from, uh, from Mr. Sapienza, we'll do that as well at a later date. Um, so meeting procedures, um, you guys did a really great job getting through your action items. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process for meetings. We did include Bob's rules of order. Um, it's a supplement to Robert's rules. Robert's rules is about a you know, whole volume. And that's pretty complicated for a, a board that, that meets um, in this capacity. So um, the town has adopted Bob's rules. It's just an abbreviated version. It gives you the nuts and bolts of how the meeting um, proceeds. Um, just kind of how we've done tonight with motion seconds. Um, I won't go over every single page of that. It's a pretty short read and it's mostly for, if there's a question you can flip to that section to review. This is what we're supposed to do. If there's ever any questions during the meeting on what those procedures are, um, the, the chair presides, but if the chair is not sure, you can always kick those questions over to staff. We'll help you go through those and, and help you kind of navigate the procedural elements. Um, I will highlight uh, just for ease of reference uh, near the very back of that Bob's rules packet, there's a one page summary of um, your motion and vote requirements. And that's a pretty, pretty handy reference tool um, for navigating the meeting. So that's a, that's one you might want to highlight for, um, for future use. Um, the Board of Adjustments meets on an as-needed basis. Um, so typically when the when the board needs to meet, it's based on an application that we're hearing. Um, staff receives all the applications for the town. And so once we have the application received and it's determined to be complete, we will advertise those public hearings. Almost everything that comes before the Board of Adjustments is a public hearing. So we have to advertise those in advance. Um, and so once we start that process and are starting those advertisements, um, we start putting that packet together and we assign the agenda based on the action items that we've received for review. Um, your staff prepares the staff reports, the supplemental materials, um, the analysis or, and recommendations that we present to the Board of Adjustments. You'll have applicants that will come and present their cases. Um, they'll, we'll, staff will give an introduction. The um, Actually, one of your other pages in your um, in your binder is the public hearing procedures. And that's essentially what I'm describing. Um, but that's that's the procedure for those public hearings. Staff introduces it, uh, applicant introduces their project in their case and makes their case. Um, then we'll allow for a few questions from the board. Then the uh, floor is open to public comments. Um, when we have a case before the board, it's not, un, not uncommon to have uh, individuals wanna come and share their opinion about what that means to them and their property. Um, and so the Board of Adjustments role in those public hearing cases is to hear all the testimony presented to you and to take that information, form an opinion, discuss it amongst yourselves, and ultimately you'll make a vote on whether to approve, approve with conditions or deny the request. Um, Tabling is always an option too. If there's not enough information, that's, that's always an option that, that any board or commission can do is here's what we'd like to see. We need additional information. Here's the time that we think it'll take to do that. Um, and bring it back at that later date. Since most of your items are um, public hearing items, this board is it acts in what is called a quasi-judicial capacity. Um, that quasi-judicial piece means you're acting as kind of a jury of your peers, of your community members. That's why this, this board serves uh, without pay. Thank you all. Um, I know it comes with uh, not a lot of respect all the time, but it's a very important role. Um, so in that quasi-judicial capacity, there's a couple of key elements that you need to kind of keep in mind um, as you're working through um, receiving information and hearing that information and making decisions as a Board of Adjustments member. Um, there's a couple of really important elements to that. One of them is that you can't receive outside information that the other board members aren't uh, don't have access to. So that's called an ex parte communication. It's Latin. It means having received information outside of the body of the of the peers where they didn't have the same information. So this could be someone at the grocery store that says, hey, I heard about this case and here's what I think about that. Um, you have the, the challenge of navigating those conversations to 
maybe advise that individual that um, as, as a member of the Board of Adjustments, I can't receive that information outside of the meeting, I'd encourage you to come and speak your, your, um, your comments, provide your comments out of the public hearing. You can provide your comments in writing to town staff to put in the packet, um, but I can't take that information from you today. It's not the right setting. Um, if you do happen to get information, even though you've said, no, I can't listen to it, and if it, you get that information anyhow, um, the remedy for ex parte communications is to disclose it. So when we have a public hearing, there's a, an opportunity to disclose ex parte communications. It's as simple as I ran into so-and-so at the grocery store and they gave me this information related to this case and I'm sharing it here so everyone has the same information. Um, sometimes it's as simple as I've, I heard from three neighbors that told me that they were in favor of or opposed to this case and that's, that's the disclosure. Um, so, so those are the, uh, it's a pretty simple remedy, just making sure everyone has the same information. Is communication with town staff need to be disclosed as well? Typically, no. I mean, it never hurts, but staff is is kind of a neutral party, and it's actually another tool that you have in your toolbox. Um, if you have questions for staff, typically what we'll do, if it's a simple question, we're going to answer it. If the, if the answer to the question benefits the entire Board of Adjustments, a lot of times what we'll do is just respond in, in writing, in an email, and say, we received this question, and here's the answer to that question so that everyone has the same information. Um, the, the, that tool is in your toolbox too. If someone is, you know, uh, contacting you or sending you, you know, they may email you because they know your email address and say, Hey, here's my opinion. You can forward those communications onto staff and we'll collect them and put them in the packet so that everyone has that same information. And you can, you know, refer people and, you know, they might reach out to you, um, to contact staff and say that, you know, that's a, I have to kind of stay out of the, the discussions until it's time for the meeting. But if you if you have questions about that or you want to show that information now, you can contact staff and they'll they'll help guide you to the right places and get that information. Um, any other questions on ex parte communications? No. Okay. Um, the other important part of public hearings um, is, um, and we always do it at the beginning, is a conflicts of interest. If you do have any conflicts, um, then you will disclose that conflict. If it's a substantial conflict, you may have to recuse yourself from a meeting. Um, certainly, the what is a conflict is defined very clearly in state law. And some things that appear to be a, a perception of a conflict are often um, seem more important than they are from a legal standpoint. So if you have any questions on conflicts, we do have uh, legal counsel that represents the town who can provide an opinion on your particular circumstances. Just reach out to town staff. We can put you in contact with the town attorney to evaluate um, those particular circumstances regarding the applicant, your role, how that role is involved, and if there's a substantial interest. And so um, it never hurts to ask. Feel free to reach out. Our attorneys are very good at working through those, those uh, processes and giving re those recommendations. Yeah, Dan's questions are pretty simple. Either. If you are, he'll answer that. If you aren't, he'll cover it for you. Let you know how you're doing that. They're not around it, but they're there to take care of it. Yep. And you send those in when we get the packets to you. Yeah. So if if you if you see on the agenda that there's um uh, an applicant or that is like a, a client that you work for, or maybe it's your company, um, or it could be a family member, yeah. It could be your neighbor um, applying for a variance or something of that nature. So certainly those things do come up, especially in a small town. Um, and so just reach out and ask. Generally speaking, if you know my neighbors are applying for something, that's usually not a conflict because you as a board member, if you're not receiving compensation for that or you're not, you know, it, it just it's, doesn't usually rise to the occasion of a conflict of interest. There can certainly be a perception. That's where the town attorney can help guide you through. You know, this might have the appearance of, of being a conflict, but if you're not, if you have no, you know, personal financial gain, then it's usually not going to be a conflict of interest. But reach out. Those those questions are always helpful to get answered beforehand. Um, and our town attorney is good at reacting pretty quickly when those come up. So reach out early and we'll we'll get you taken care of. Um, let's see, we covered uh, meet on an as needed basis and how those agendas get set. Um, it's, it's pretty unusual for the Board of Adjustments to be 
um, to hold work sessions or policy type discussions because it doesn't really set policy. It really, the, the role of the Board of Adjustment is to um, to act on those cases. I, I often refer to them as the, the cases that fall into the, the gray area. Um, variances are, are topics that come to the board because there wasn't another remedy. Um, it's the, the rules say this, we couldn't make it work. You can't just ignore the rules. And so often the, the solution is, well, we need to, uh, to remedy that by considering all the factors in that particular case. And if it's reasonable to do so, then we can vary that rule for that particular set of circumstances. Um, so it, it is often a kind of a gray area where the, the code is not black and white or the code applied black and white creates hardships. Um, so that is the um, one of the roles of this board. You don't do a lot of policy uh, type of discussions. Although one of the things that you can do um, is if you're seeing the, and I've been through this instance before, if you see the same type of variance request over and over and over again, and you feel like it's because the code needs to be changed to not have that same problem over and over again, a lot of times the board of adjustments will advise the planning commission and the board of trustees that we keep seeing the same thing and we think there's a reasonable remedy out there we would like for you to consider making some changes to this particular code so that this same hardship doesn't keep recurring. Um, and that kind of informs those other uh, commissions and board and the board of trustees that we probably need to do something at a policy level. This board doesn't make those decisions, but you can absolutely make a recommendation. If that is, if you're seeing that pattern, you can reach out to staff, let us know. We can put that as an agenda topic for you to vote on um, you know, we need to recommend that the planning commission pick up this this case and and uh, make those or recommend some changes to the code to alleviate this particular problem. Um, so, otherwise, there's not many other things that would come onto the agenda from the board of adjustment members. But if you do think of something and you want to discuss it, let me know and we'll see if we can put it on there. Um, we do use work sessions from time to time to go over codes, policy provisions, um, refreshers on how things operate. Um, and probably one topic that we'll work on in the next year or so is creating and updating bylaws for the Board of Adjustments. Um, it's something that's been on our town attorney's mind to, to clarify the, the bylaws, which is kind of the, the operating procedures for this board. Um, they're not real clear right now. We, we've given you a binder for kind of how the board has been operating, but there is a desire to continue to improve on that. But it is a big lift, and our town attorney only has so much time when he's doing Board of Trustees and Planning Commission and every other every other town legal function as well. So um, that's on the radar and it'll come back at a work session to discuss what that looks like. Um, in your binder, um, we included uh, pair, or, um, excerpts from the land use code on the variance uh, procedures and that's it's copied straight out of the code. Um, so that's kind of kind of frames um, what this board is is doing on those particular cases. Um, the land use code is around 300 pages, so there's a lot of provisions in there, and so there's a lot of things that could come this board's way. Um, we provided a, um, links to our online resources where you can find that code. Um, it is something to be familiar with those various sections. Staff will always try to present it in a way that helps you connect the dots for what does the code say? Why does the code say that? What is the issue at hand to kind of help you navigate that? Um, but being familiar with how the, the land use code operates will also help you in working through those variance cases. The section that we included right behind variance is appeals. And this is a, a really unique and important role of the Board of Adjustments. Um, the Board of Adjustments in Wellington also serves as the Board of Appeals. Um, and the appeals are of uh, decisions that are made at an administrative level. So if if the planning director makes a determination on a particular use case or location of offense or or any other administrative decision and the parties feel that that was not the right decision, they have the ability to appeal saying, I don't think that they interpreted it correctly. Are we missing a page? Well, second. Yeah, second. It's just bearing. There's one more page. There, okay. Nope, you're good. Um, so the those the appeal process is for is an opportunity to provide relief where a party feels like like town staff made the wrong decision or interpreted the code incorrectly. It would be presented to the this board 
uh, for that appeal. And you'd be provided all the same information that the administrative officer had in making that determination. And you'd be presented with, with the evidence in the case, you'd be presented by the applicant or the, the aggrieved party explaining why they think it was the wrong decision. And then you have the ability, you have all the same powers as the administrative official that made the decision um, to use the code to affirm that decision, reverse that decision, or apply the code in some other way to meet the spirit and intent that gives them some relief. Yeah, Megan. What if someone's appealing the Board of Adjustment? What if someone's appealing the Board of Adjustment decision? Like, who hears that? It, it is, is it? it's very final. So, and that's a great question. Thanks for bringing it up. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, so this, the Board of Adjustments is the final decision on anything town related. If someone doesn't agree with the decision of the Board of Adjustments, their only remedy is to appeal in district court. Um, yep. So, so your roles are really important. You're the, the last, uh, last stop before things become litigious. And not everything does become litigious. So don't be too worried about that. Um, but yeah, very good question. Um, again like <laughs> nope nope um okay so 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 yeah and most of the cases you're going to hear of variances appeals are, are really pretty rare um when they do come up it's it's usually on something that's pretty important to the applicant to, to achieve what they're trying to do and sometimes it's just where the the couple of appeals that i've been the administrative de uh, decision on those were you know, the code was interpreted very, you know, black and white, and the party said, you know, I, I don't think that you've applied that correctly. And the Board of Adjustments said, well, we think it did apply correctly. I'm sorry that you didn't like the code. We might want to change that code. And we did end up changing that code. It was over a fence height, and um, our planning commission decided that it wasn't appropriate to keep it the way it had been written. And it was interpreted correctly, but we changed the code so that it could be interpreted differently for future cases. Um, the other appeal process that could come before this board is you you also serve as the, uh, um, I wanna call it the construction trades board, um, but the you you would be presented with appeals of the building official. Um, so if, if the building official is working on a project site and said, no, you can't use that particular material, it doesn't meet the, the international building codes, you need to use, do it this way, or, um, You've, you've mismeasured, you can't do that application, you have to do it this way. And the builder says, no, absolutely not, you're, you're wrong, there's a better way to do it. Um, and the building officials made the decision, the contractor or the builder could come to this board and say, this is how we think it ought to be done. You would oversee that, um, that it is still an appeal of the building official, but it's a lot different scenario than the land use code. Um, the land use code is just dramatically different than the international building codes. Um, so I throw that out there so you can be prepared. Again, your, your town staff is going to help you navigate those um, instances. Some of you have experience in, in those particular fields, and that's why it's really valuable to have members uh, from our community with those, those trades and professional experiences to be on this board to help navigate those, those particular circumstances. Um, what else is in the packet? Reminder. Good public hearing procedures, ex parte. Um, oh yeah, there's an there's a, an article in there uh, called uh, uh, guidelines for public comment from Jurassic Parliament. Um, it's it, it's a nice article um, that just kind of highlights maybe some of the nuances of navigating public hearings and showing respect for individuals and some do's and don'ts. Um, we included that. I think it was referred to us from our. Um, uh, Sirsa is our, our insurance uh, company for the town. I think they provided that as a reference for our board of trustees and navigating their meetings, and we felt it was appropriate to include it here too. So um, it's a good quick read for you. That's it. Perfect. <laughs> going going through it real quick. Nice job, Kirk. <laughs> Thanks. Megan. I have a couple. <laughs> I know, that's so nice. <laughs> I know. Um, cool teacher's daughter. Um, I have a couple of questions and I had emailed you about, and I decided to just wait and ask them here. Um, my experience is on state boards. So, and um, to some degree developing legislature. So this board in particular is a little bit different for me. Um, I have a couple of questions 
about how the meeting, uh, our meetings versus the planning meetings run. Um, I attend, I have attended several of both of them. And in particular, there have been a couple of projects that um, I'm concerned a little bit about the transfer of information to make an appropriate decision um, about a variance, because it seems to me that some of the information that would have been useful to the variance conversation actually happened after the variance conversation in the planning meeting. Um, and so I, I realize that project is probably atypical. And I'm, I don't know if I need to talk about which project it was that I saw, but I, I would recommend, yeah. I, I think I know which one okay. it is. And I'd recommend not talking about specifics because there's still applications pending. Well, and that's okay. This is a mm -hmm. procedure the, question. Yep. So in instances where there's ongoing meetings in both boards, how common is it that a lot of the information <clears throat> presented by like a public health official in this instance, or someone else, uh, an expert in the field that might be called in the planning commission, none of these board members had that information or could hear any part of that conversation before the before their decision, which may have influence or not. Is that common or is that just totally not common? That the board of adjustments would be what I feel much less educated there was no presentation or talk about a presentation from an expert. Um, I, I just, I had a procedure question because it just seems like there was so much less consideration given to that sort of level of public information, um, public health information, anything like that at this meeting. Are they usually run that far apart? Like, is it uncommon that the, the planning commission gets all the information after the board of adjustments. I just, I just wanted kind of clarification. Yeah. And it, and that's a good question. It, it really depends on the circumstances for, and, and in the instance that you're referring to, there was a, a the procedures or are kind of inverted because the, the use that was, was proposed was a use by right, but they knew that there was a, a standard that needed to be varied if they were going to get approvals. And so there was really no need to go to the planning commission. The planning commission couldn't approve it if it didn't have the variance first. Mm -hmm. So that was a timing issue. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been ripe for the planning commission to even consider if it mm -hmm. wasn't going to pass the variance board mm -hmm. or board of adjustments. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't call it variance board because you see more than that. Mm -hmm. um, so so that was kind of a, a the procedural process for that one. Um, and it really can depend on the type of application in the case and, and what type of information is being presented. Um, so it is kind of a case by case basis. Anything that comes before the board of adjustments is a case by case. In the case of public health concerns, are we as a board allowed to ask for input or research the I mean, the town, then we ask for the research and the town then provides the research is that if it is a public health, I, I see it coming down. I mean, like we've done landfill discussions. I like, this is not just about one thing. Like we as a town, we have an aquifer. We're going to be running into these environmental concerns, and it's it is a passion of mine. But are we allowed to ask for research to help educate our conversation that then would be ex party communication and sent to everybody? Like, how how much are we allowed to ask for or not ask for? Since potentially we could be seeing it before those conversations even happen later. Yeah. Um, so the board of adjustments can absolutely ask for more information. Um, don't be surprised if sometimes the response is, I'm not sure that that information is germane to the question being asked. And that, that can come up sometimes. Um, and I'd refer you back in the, the binder, the, on the variance procedures, there's a, there's a approval criteria or a criteria for approval of findings for approval. That was, that's the right language. And so that, that is the, the charge of this board is, does it, does the application meet these criteria and if it does then oftentimes the variance can be granted or approved with mm -hmm. conditions if it doesn't then usually the answer is no and each one of you have a vote um so if the if the question is can we have this information 
usually the answer is, yeah, we can, we can do that. If we need time to do that, we might suggest you might need to table this to allow staff time to, to pull that or the applicant to do that, that research. Um, but either staff or the applicant might push back and say, I'm not sure that that is quite germane to the topic, but we'll I think that's fair. Certainly worth the ask. I yeah. just wanted to make sure that it was allowed that. Um, Are you asking if you can do research on your no, own? No, I know I really can't because that's in there too. I mean, it's it's actually just whether or not there's a, you know, if I feel like I need more information to make a decision if someone's asking for a 60% variance, that's a, you know, a giant variance or a 30% or a mm -hmm. 2%. Like, you know, I think it, I just wanted to make sure if I needed to ask for more information that I could ask. So. Yeah. That always ends. Yeah. You didn't always the, ask. Yeah. I, I've looked at this job because he keeps saying it's quasi, quasi judicial. And so I look at it as if you're on a jury mm -hmm. and basically what you need to make the decision on is what's presented here and um i've had to let my personal opinion just stay outside and and just go with what what they have talked about in the meeting and so that that is sometimes well we don't usually have that long before the meeting to you know we'll find out oh this is coming up and that's in three days mm -hmm. so so I you don't have a whole lot of time. I just to wanted to make sure I could ask for more information if I felt oh, yeah, there was a, these guys for a, a hole mm -hmm. yeah. that right. would need to be balanced against the one person who's allowed a presentation, which would be the applicant. Right. And and if you, it would be better to ask before the meeting oh, yeah. so that these well, guys could actually yes, find something if it's appropriate or tell you that, you know, this isn't yeah. Yeah. your I, name. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and I agree, and and I think you probably understand that too. If yeah. if you see something, and if you can give staff a heads up, we might be able to get that information and present it the night of the the hearing pretty quickly. Other things might take more time, but at least we'd be prepared to to come and explain to the board. You know, this was the the question. We we agree. We need to provide that information. We can't provide it in that short a time frame. We'd recommend that you continue this this hearing to a later date so we can pull that information together for you. Absolutely. And I just thinking of some not too distant in the past cases. I know Wyatt has reached out and said, "Hey, have you even considered this section of the building code? It was firewalls on a utility uh, structure, and and it was like, you know, that that's really great. And we were able to find a, a path by Wyatt reaching out and saying, "Hey, have you considered these other options?" And and it worked out pretty well for the applicant. So all it takes is a heads up. <laughs> yeah. You said you had other questions. Was do you have others? I, I rolled them all into oh, that okay. long rambling. Uh, I mean, I think that was rolled into like, is that typical that there's that huge gap of knowledge present, you know, like over a month or two, and then whether or not we could ask for, I think my concern is just not the really straightforward stuff that truly is does this meet the variance but when it comes to potentially impacting town growth public health our resources things like that um since we are the final say and the next stop would be court court i just i'm i'm incredibly like i'm a i'm a knowledge person and a data person and i'll tamp that down within reason i mean if someone's asking for three inches for a fence, I'm not going to ask you for a bunch of research on fences, and that's fine. I think it's just on the outside chance, since I want to serve for a long time, I just wanted to take this opportunity to ask because potentially there could be other projects in the future that I understand are limited reach, but I also think sometimes it's good to have more information when you're making those decisions than what is presented by the applicant. Yeah. That's good. And I, I agree with you. I don't think I have a whole lot of other new okay. topics. Well, Any okay. other questions? Is there anything in the works? No. Uh, yes, thank you. If, if, if we're done with, I have that in my notes to make an announcement in the communications portion. So if there's any other questions on 
um, roles, procedures. I know I gave you a super high level crash course. So if you have other questions that come up, feel free to reach out to me. We'll get you answers to those. But if there's nothing else for tonight, we'll move on to communications. All right. Did the board select the members so that we have a builder, an architect, an accountant, an engineer, and a vet? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I think having been involved in the interviews, I think they selected the people who applied. Um, <laughs> so thank you for volunteering. Um, well, I like the balance, though. I mean, no, I, think I, was just say, cause I, th I think it's a really good representation yeah. of different. I'm on the yeah. Larimer County Board of Appeals now, and we have electrician, an architect, an engineer. Yeah, so it's the same thing. So it's busted out. So you get a good variety of everybody's perspectives. So I think that'll be helpful on this board. Yeah, I that's been my experience too um, with past planning commissions and boards that I've worked with. You you do kind of end up with those those professional type or trade related um, careers on those boards because of their experience and the value that they bring. Um, I did work in one community where I had a planning commission of seven members and six of them were realtors. And that was a little awkward. Mm. Um, so we had a lot of uh, recusals for conflicts on different applications to see the least. <laughs> but I think it is a good balance. Um, each of you bring something different to the board and you have. So much alike. Don't have any problem. Yeah. But also I think someone not necessarily educated in this is also useful because mm -hmm. you think about it differently than someone who's worked in I'm it not for hung up on yeah. something that's, mm -hmm. that's always been done a certain way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I will be the one. Hold strong. <laughs> yeah. And the different backgrounds create questions that make everyone think. So no, I think I, I'm really pleased with with our volunteer boards right now. We had an appreciation dinner last night to recognize those that um, that do volunteer and and it's the commitment that you make to serve the community that really makes things work. So happy to have each of you up here. If you're ready, I'll do communications. It's real brief. Um, we do have uh, an application that we we believe it will be on the May meeting. Um, the application is not yet complete, but if they get everything submitted to us, um, we would expect to have a public hearing that last Thursday of May, 20, 25th? 25th of May. Um, what we generally do is um, because the board meets on an as needed basis instead of every month, um, we encourage you to keep that last, the fourth Thursday free in the event that we do have something um, for action. Um, but once we receive a complete application and we begin advertising, we'll usually send you an email to let you know that we we have a, uh, an action item pending. So please make sure that you're able to attend. Um, we understand that you have plans to make for family and other things too. Um, the importance of attendance at this board is, is they're all important, but just uh, I alluded to it earlier, but um, in order for the Board of Adjustments to, to take an action on an application it requires a minimum of four votes. Um, it's a little different than some of like our Planning Commission or our Board of Trustees where a simple majority um, can pass an action item. The Board of Adjustments specifically requires a supermajority vote, which is four out of five, because those cases, like a variance, it's granting someone an additional approval that other uh, homeowners may not have available to them without going through that process. So it, it is specifically for four votes to approve. Um, three votes would fail. Um, it would only take three votes to to um, to not have an item pass, but it takes four votes to take a positive action. So that's also why we have the alternates um, to make sure that if someone has to leave or can't make it, we've got someone else to fill that spot. So if we do have a meeting on the 25th, I will be out of town. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. We'll, then we will be looking to our, our alternates to, to step up and, and have a seat. To, and when an alternate is called upon to, to fill the, the chair to get the voting requirements, they do become a full voting member. Um, that, you know, if, so if someone's not able to attend the whole meeting, they would be serving on every action item. There are other instances where, you know, maybe, you know, I have to recuse myself because that's a client of mine and I have a conflict. The uh, alternate may be able to step up and serve for that one action item. And then they would 
step back down in the second action item, the full member would be able to participate again. Um, so the alternate role is very unique, um, but it's there for a reason so that we can take, continue to connect business. And if you have any questions on how those procedures work, feel free to reach out and ask us. Did they decide, um, did the board of trustees or somebody decide that if, um, if an alternate like Levi had been serving all that time uh, as a regular member, even though he was an alternate and everybody had forgotten he was an alternate, when there's an opening on the board, is are the alternates just moved up or they they have to apply to be a full member? Okay, so there's yeah. an application date. Correct. There's and a vacancy on the board. Yes. It's so not automatic. Correct. Yeah. And, and the board did talk about that specifically and only the board of trustees can make the appointments. There's no automatic moving up. They, they can choose to do that, but they do have to take an action by resolution to make those appointments. So moving an alternate to a full position would require a vote of the board of trustees to make that appointment change. Probably something that had never happened before. Yeah. Know. Right. And yeah, and and all, whenever there's a vacancy, we we advertise that, and the and we've improved our processes too. Some of the processes weren't real clear, and so we've tried really hard with working with the board on what they wanted to see. Some of the new appointments got to go through a full panel interview, and that is the current process: is the entire board interviews each of the applicants um, before making appointments. Um, but we also, if if one of your terms is uh, about to expire, we notify you and ask you to reapply. And that was Eric reapplied for his his regular term appointment was coming to a close. And we said, Eric, would you like to reapply to continue serving on the board of adjustments? And of course, he did. And thank you. We're glad that you that you did reapply. So that that is how we're handling that to make sure that everyone knows that since the board has to make the appointment, they want to interview every applicant, whether you've been on the board for twenty years or whether you're brand new. So they do interview every single one, um, and then they make their appointments. No, I just was wondering. Yeah, if great question. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Great questions. Anything else? I don't have anything else uh, tonight. Uh, I, do. Yeah. I just want to remind everybody oh. that when I send out the packets, if you're not going to be at the meeting, let me know. I mean, you don't have to do reply to all or anything. And then if you want to give Cody more detail, that's fine. I don't need to know. Um, just let me know that you're not going to be there so we can prepare to get your alternates here. Also, I don't usually print packets. So if that's something that you would like, please email me and let me know. Um, and what else is there in here? I think that's it. Am I? Oh, yeah. I'm allowed to bring, like, if I brought my tablet, I'm allowed to bring that, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't like. No, that's okay. No, I, yeah. No, I, that's okay. I just want, I wasn't sure if I was even allowed to, like, you know, sometimes there's, like, a no electronic device rule, but. Yeah, no, you're you're allowed to use your your tablets for agenda purposes. If you're if we see that you're and this has happened to me, uh, <laughs> if you're if you're sending Facebook posts in the middle of a city council meeting, you're probably going to get called out on it. It's probably not going to be staff. It's going to be the public. So, <laughs> um, witness that one firsthand. I um, do remember the other thing I was going to say is when he talked about if you needed more information, like when we send the packet ask him all those details and stuff, but please let me know that you've sent him an email because he gets, I mean, hundreds. And so sometimes they get lost. So just let me know that you're looking for something and I'll remind him to check his email from you. Pat is a tremendous resource. We're happy to have her help help our department. <laughs> all right. I don't have anything else. The meeting is adjourned. Yep. Uh, 756. Sounds good to me. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you.